it's 10 p.m. in Banjul and from our studios on MDI Road, this is the news for the headlines. Hundreds of mourners pay their respect to the chief of Kumbo Central, Dembo Keleng Bojang, who died age 82. Kimsel introduces innovative mobile money transfer technology to the market as part of a robust strategy to war customers. Amidst the spate of fatal road traffic accidents in the Greater Banjul area, the police public relations officer weigh in on the measures put in place to ensure road safety. And Islamic militants claim responsibility for Tuesday's audacious terror attacks on Brussels, begging more questions than answers. Well, viewers, those are your headlines with me, Winifred Nicole. Group has launched what many customers describe as an innovative mobile money transfer system in the country. The service aimed at transforming the banking and GSM operations is expected to ease some of the challenges customers face. Rohi Bite picks up the rest of that story. The country's most vibrant GSM operators launched Kodo Mobile Money Sunyukalpe. Kodo meaning money in Mandinka and Sunyukalpe meaning our wallet in Wolof are the latest services introduced by the Q Group. The service comes with multiple functions. It's said to be the first of its kind in the country. Many believe the introduction of this new product would make mobile banking and money transfer service relatively. This product has been described as one of the best products designed by the Q Group so far. Its operation requires proper training of personnel. According to the head of Kodo, Sirandau, the company has already trained and installed agents across the length and breadth of the country. Now, for the added debt, Kodo Mobile Money is more than an ordinary wallet. We have selected a scalable platform with a modular design that, was, that will allow us to adapt to changing market demands and make the development and deployment process of future products and services on the platform quicker, easier and more cost effective. Kodo Financial Service, licensed by the Central Bank of the Gambia, is said to be a game changer in the business sector. The governor of the Central Bank of the Gambia acknowledged the innovation tactics GSM companies have brought in the country. Governor Kohli also highlighted the significant role this service would play in transforming the Gambian economy from what he described as a cash-based to cashless economy due to the costs attached to maintaining cash. Interoperability removes the painful decision and thus drive usage of the service. In fact, Section 8.1 of the regulation states categorically that uh, uh, payment service providers shall utilize open systems capable of becoming interoperable with other payment systems in the country and internationally. I am glad that uh, the KSL platform does possess that capability or those capabilities as the granting of a license to KSL. Panamax Technology is QSL's solution provider and partner. The fact that less than 70% of the country's population are not using the banking system, Kodo Sunyukalpe is therefore designed for those that are not yet to save their monies at the banks to take advantage of the new opportunities provided by the service. QSL Sunyukos, being the first 3G mobile communication service provider, providing affordable and quality mobile telecommunication services to the Gambian public since inception. QSL Sunyukos has revolutionized and stabilized, yes, and stabilized, I'll emphasize that, the mobile communication industry in the Gambia, and is now recognized as one of the most innovative companies in the country with products like Q Power, E Fancanta, Q Football, Q Currency, and the like. The Minister of Finance and Economic Affairs, Abdu Koli, launched the Kodo Mobile Money, Sunyukalpe, on behalf of the Minister of Information and Communication Infrastructure. The government welcomes such innovation for the benefits it will bring to its people and for the fact that it will allow the country to improve its competitiveness both regionally and internationally. This historic offering from QSL is an opportunity to ensure digital inclusion, break the digital divide in our country, 
and put at our disposal the essential modern tools necessary to serve a more prosperous humanity and make our country, our world, a better place to live in. The luncheon also witnessed performances from comedians and musicians who used the opportunity to explain what the service was all about. Since its establishment in 2009, QCEL has played its role by complementing national development endeavors. According to the company CEO, this service is designed to make life easy for customers. With your Kodo Sunyu Cafe, you can pay for your bills and your goods, pay for your postpaid lines, buy your petrol from Atlas, buy your groceries from the supermarkets, street corner full of shops, you can buy your onions and fish from your market vendor anywhere, anytime. The QCEL boss made a surprise gesture by declaring that QCEL SIM card would be given free of charge in all customer care centers. As if this gesture was not enough, JA also threw another package to the participants who attended the program by offering Sunyukalpe account to everyone. Rahi Bitsei. GRTS. The chief of Combo Central, Dembo Keleng Bojang, died early Tuesday morning at his home in Birkama. He was 82. He served as chief of the Combo Central district since 2010. As Samuel Ba was there, as the late chief was laid to rest and filed in this report. An emotional goodbye to one of the country's most influential traditional rulers. The late Chief Dembo Keleng Bojang died early Tuesday morning at the age of 82 at his Brikama residence. Thousands of mourners, among them cabinet ministers, senior government officials, all converged at the Brikama Central Mosque to pay their final respects to the late chief. The fallen hero has served as chief of Combo Central from 2010 till date. Mourners who traveled from far and near all described the late chief as one of the country's most influential traditional rulers. Uh, this funeral is personal to two people, His Excellency the President and the Honorable Minister for Local Government and uh, Lands. But uh, this gentleman, this corpse, has during his lifetime been a great man to this country. On official though, but this should be seen as a a, a, a national mourning day because uh, he has been an advocate of people's unity, of cultural unity, and uh, a person who can be a cause of the people of Brikama's unity and, and stability. Yeah, since he became chief in 2010, all what he was doing is bringing people together, bringing people together to share ideas and and work according to the interests of Bekama in development. So I think uh, he is actually a man whose footsteps, the young ones that are left behind, should, should look into and follow, so that his followers this sort of history that is worth remembering. As he commences his eternal journey to his creator, other notable mourners who interacted with him say the late chief has had a successful six-year stint as chief of Combo Central. As a chief, Kellen has a lot of qualities. One of them is nurturing unity, not only within the district of Combo Central, but throughout the Gambia, wherever he is well. Apart from that, Kellen is an example of a patriotic Gambian. Whatever is in the interest of the country, Kellen would stand for it. And he was very loyal since he started to support the party from day one. Kellen has always maintained that. Mayor Yankuba Koli of the ruling APRC party said they have lost a great and influential traditional figure. Uh, today, uh, honestly, it's a very sad day uh, for us. The people of Brikama, the people of this region, the president, our party, and Gambia as a whole. This man is a very good man. He has worked for his country to death. He has worked for the president. In fact, he is number one lover of His Excellency, the president. 
today for us at the party level, we are very sad. So many hearts were indeed broken as they bade farewell to the fallen hero. Chief Dembo Keleng Bojang may have gone, but he leaves not only his good works, but also the many lives he has touched. Samuel Ba, GRTS. May his soul rest in peace. Accidents are common occurrence on our roads and highways with often fatal implications. Many of these accidents could have been avoided and life saved, according to experts. Kedja Tujalo examines the factors that exacerbate the phenomenon, as well as the measures already in place to ensure road safety. Of road traffic accidents, a good number of which claims lives, has caught the attention of police officers. Experts say most of those crashes could be avoided if people, drivers in particular, respect traffic rules and regulations. The police and road users have been taking part in efforts meant to ensure zero accidents, but those efforts seem to be yielding little dividend. The police public relations officer is calling for a change of attitudes. Of course, there is strict law that guides the issue of mobile phone usage while you are driving. And if you are caught, you are caught, you can earn yourself a penalty of a fine from uh, $1,500 up to $6,000. So we are telling drivers to desist from talking on mobile phones because this creates distraction. Not only mobile phones, but you know, mobile phone is really common uh, in private drivers. On the other hand, in commercial vehicles also, what we notice is they are being distracted by music. Some of the accidents, according to Jai, are caused by overspeeding. If you go by the highway, you will see that in most of the residential areas um, on the road, you will have road signs that indicate the traffic signs as to what you should, uh, the speed you should drive at. But however, you see that um, what is unfortunate is that most of our drivers will exceed beyond these speed limits, thereby um, causing accidents. Some, um, um, what is really uh, uh, um, um, crazy about this um, speeding is that um, if you go beyond the required speed limit at particular areas, map out, you will realize that it's very difficult for the driver to react to any eventuality um, as and when it is required so that he will be able to avoid such a situation. The rate of accidents involving lorries carrying shipping containers has also caught the attention of the police spokesperson. Sometimes what happens is pro probably is because the vehicle, you know, containers, they are hooked on the vehicle. So probably there is a problem with the hook somewhere or generally there is a mechanical problem with regards to the vehicle itself. So those might be issues that will crop up as the vehicle is on its way uh, when it already loads the container. So these are all issues that are, are really being looked into so that we will have uh, an effective mechanism that will deal with these vehicles that load containers. The introduction of traffic lights and the erection of homes on certain roads are just some of the measures in place to ensure road safety, according to the PRO. Generally, what we have as Gambia Police Force, uh, we have stepped up the issue of um, um, police presence on the highway. Um, you can see that in most, if you are on the highway now, most junctions, most uh, places, busy places, you find police officers controlling traffic, um, giving signals and ensuring, watching out, ensuring that vehicle don't go on over um, speeding or um, careless driving and so on. All these things are being checked by the police and we are serious enforcing the motor traffic act and the motor traffic regulation to ensure that people who are uh, um, uh, found wanting of traffic offenses are seriously dealt with. Yeah, I came up with tips like keeping a reasonable distance between vehicles to avoid a pile up, being careful, vigilant, avoiding distraction of any sort while driving or crossing the road to prevent road accidents, adding the life you save may be yours. Taxi driver Abdul Aziz Njai attributed most accidents to lack of patience over speeding and in some cases people driving under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Pedestrians, he said, should use the footpath and this is from walking between cars. Cyclist Sidi Tangara tests his bikes before starting any ride to protect himself. Some are in the habit of using their phones on busy roads, something Ajijob, who is a student, thinks should be avoided. 
The measures have been in place, but getting people to abide by the laid down rules seems to be an uphill battle. Kadija Tujalo, GRCS News. The Minister of the Environment, Climate Change, Water Resources, Parks and Wildlife, Pa Usman Jaju, has outlined the challenges posed by climate change, its impact on the environment and people, as well as government's untiring efforts in confronting these challenges. Here is an excerpt of the Minister's statement delivered on the occasion of World Meteorology Day, celebrated annually. Temperatures have also reached a symbolic and significant milestone. The average global temperature of the air above the Earth's surface broke all previous records last year by a significant margin, measuring around 1 degree Celsius above pre-industrial period. As part of global warming trend, many countries are reporting unprecedented spikes in both maximum daytime and minimum nighttime temperatures, as well as more intense heat waves. Major droughts have been observed in some parts of the world. Simultaneously, once in a generation heavy rainstorms are becoming more frequent. Distinguished viewers, that said, it is however still possible to minimize the damage. In December 2015, the world's governments unanimously adopted the Paris Agreement providing for rapid and deep cuts in greenhouse gas emissions. This historic agreement commits all countries to undertake ambitious efforts to respond to the urgent threat of climate change on the basis of their common but differentiated responsibility. The Minister of the Environment, Climate Change, Water Resources, Parks and Wildlife, Pa Usman Jaju, speaking on the occasion of World Meteorology Day. Ruling party bigwigs and residents of the West Coast Region Settlement of Mariamakunda gathered at the weekend for a mass political rally. The rally that availed the party faithful the opportunity to reaffirm their loyalty to the Alliance for Patriotic Reorientation and Construction also saw the adoption of Modu Dahaba as honorary father of the people of Mariamakunda. We have more in this report by Momodu Jalo. In what could be described as a show of force, thousands of residents of Mariamakunda, Labakore and Yuna stormed the main village square for a mass political rally, the first major such gathering in the area since the creation of the Old Indum constituency. Dressed in their asavis, the rally accorded the enthusiastic supporters the opportunity to celebrate the success of the ruling APRC party and also reaffirm their commitment to the party and its leadership. Organized by residents, the garden was held at the behest of Modu Dahaba, a renowned party activist, famous for his support for the party and loyalty to President Jame. Several hierarchy government and party officials graced this rally, which lasted late into the evening, punctuated by speeches from party leaders and activists. The Alcala of Maria Makunda, joined by other local party leaders, welcomed the dignitaries for responding to their calls, whilst also commending villagers for the turnout at a time when political activity is gearing up. One by one, the villagers reaffirmed their support and loyalty to the president and party, whilst also thanking him for his numerous development accomplishments across the country. The Honorary Father Modu Dahaba expressed profound gratitude to President Jame for according him the opportunity to engage in political activism, which according to him will continue as long as he lives. The APRC made me what I am, and I will always defend its values, principles, and leadership, a defiant Dahaba proclaimed amidst great applause from the crowd. Dahaba also enumerated the development projects which cut across all sectors of national development, hailing Professor Jame as a great leader who champions the wishes and aspirations of Gambians. He described the APRC as a party of the people, insisting that it will continue to exist for posterity. The national mobilizer of the party, Yankuba Koli, called on the people of Mariama Kunda to continue their support for the party as it undertakes its journey of transformation. He said the president has invested a lot in the provision of social amenities and roads for rural communities something that is set to continue into the future. He urged them to be wary of the opposition who roam around trying to discredit the APRC government without offering any alternatives. Kali wondered why the opposition is only interested in power instead of joining the government to move the country ahead. This he argued is evidence enough that they are only hungry for power and are opportunists. He mocked opposition dreams of a coalition in the upcoming elections, saying he is certain that this would not happen 
as they cannot settle for a leader amongst themselves, describing it as a marriage of convenience that would crumble as soon as it is convened. He warned the villagers that the opposition cannot do anything for them, thus urging them to be steadfast in their support and loyalty to the APRC. This was recorded by Babuge Sanko and Aisadu Jifanga Jaju, the youth and women mobilizers of the APRC respectively, who commended Dahaba for his work for the party. Rebel Gay Sanko advised the youth to borrow a leaf from Dahaba and strive to promote the party by engaging their peers, say youths, have an indispensable role in the APRC. He described the president as Gambia's only salvation and urged all Gambians irrespective of their tribe, religion and region in order to develop the country. The nominated National Assembly member also advised the youth to be law-abiding, peaceful and respectful of authority. Mrs. Jifanga Jaju, on the other hand, appealed to the women to continue their role as vanguards of the APRC party, saying women now play a greater role in politics than any time in the Gambia's history. This he attributed to President Jame's leadership and love for Gambian women. The women's mobilizer calls on all party structures to coordinate their activities as they continue to reach out to communities across the country. She also urged all young women to acquire voters' cards as the supplementary voter registration continues. The meeting also witnessed some revelations from a former Gambian dissident who finally realized the folly of demonizing the government in the West. Alhaji Farai Balde spoke of his regret during his days in the diaspora when he was one of the most vociferous critics of the government. Balde said he was inspired by the president's speech at the UN General Assembly, which showed to the whole world that the Gambia is an independent sovereign republic. Professor Jame's opposition to the practice of homosexuality also cemented his status as a great Pan-Africanist who will always defend the continent. These and other qualities, Bandler concluded, convinced him beyond doubt that there was no other alternative to returning home and seeking forgiveness. The Minister of Interior, Usman Sonko, described the rally as very significant, judging by the turnout amongst the elders. He described the upcoming elections as a test for the newly established Old Union constituency, which has already shown great prospects. Victory, the Interior Minister said, is certain, but the question will be, what percentage? He therefore urged them to acquire voters' cards and vote massively for the APRC come December. Speaking of security, Minister Sanko warned that the security services would not compromise the peace and stability of the country, but urged residents to be vigilant and cooperative by reporting any crime to the police using the toll-free hotlines. Sanko finally called on elders to discredit the Bagway syndrome popular among the youth as it had already taken a heavy toll on lives and resources. The rally closed with a rousing address by the firebrand politician and minister Balagaba Jahumpa. The action man, as he is fondly called, urged the Jubilean supporters to reflect on the numerous roads, hospitals, schools, bridges, and other developments accomplished by President Jame. This he added, amidst great jubilation, will robustly continue as the president has expressed his intention to transform the Gambia into an economic superpower. Minister Jahumpa finally called on Gambians to sound politics of tribalism and regionalism and embrace the APRC's development agenda, which is championed by Professor Jame. Mamoru Jalo. GRTS News. Gambia Port Authority has been demonstrating its resolve to meet international standards, particularly in the important area of security, in view of the threats, terrorism, and terror-related incidents posed to maritime security. The five-day training for GPA security staff and personnel of the Gambia Police Force focused on the International Ship and Ports Facility Security Code. Babukar Kamara tells us more transaction in this country in terms of trade passes through the port and business goes where there is confidence and what brings about confidence safety security this makes the training all the more necessary especially in view of recent terror related incidents in the sub region although it is not their main preoccupation guards at the port of Banjul could be the first line of defense against terrorism it could be recalled that events in the recent past have proven that no country in the world is safe against maritime security threats, notably terrorism. The ISPS code is a comprehensive set of measures to enhance the security of ships and port facilities. Developed in response to the perceived threats to ships and port facilities in the wake of the September 11 attacks in the United States of America. Does your job does not only stop at allowing people to access the port. You have to monitor their activities throughout their stay within the facility. The five-day training program on international ship and ports facility security code, pioneered by the GPA management, is considered by participants and their respective trainers as a success. 
One thing that stood out of this uncompromising stance taken by officials at the gateway in relation to international standards designed to counter the increase in threats of terrorism posed to marine security. The port is an international, commercial or maritime link and has, its security cannot be compromised. And maritime trade has its procedures, programs, and standards. And one of them, which is very important and international component, is what? ISPS. This training is very important and it makes us improve and have the prerequisite knowledge to do our job to the best of our ability. After considering its human resource as its most valuable asset in meeting its objectives, the port's management has pledged its unwavering resolve to invest heavily on its personnel to meet international standards. Um, as a port, you will realize that apart from the investment in the wharves and the equipment, human resource is the most valuable asset of this authority, and that is you and I. If you think that training is expensive, try ignorance. What that goes to show is that if you put somebody who doesn't know, he will do more damage. So to avoid all that, you invest in training to equip the person with skills and knowledge so that he can be able to perform his duties more efficiently. So that's why the management is continuously committed to investing in training. As security officers, you have a bigger role to play because the civilian community are ignorant of your role. And it is you, the participant, it is you, the security officers to tell them what your role is. The week-long training program focuses on general rules of engagement as they relate to standard operating procedures, patrol and searches, power of detention, arrest amongst others, meant to ensure a safe and secure port in conformity with international standards. As participants, we have been sensitized on very important models highly required to enhance our level of proficiency. This includes Reminding us the port security policy and the need to safeguard it. Babakar Kamara, GRTS. That report by Babakar Kamara takes us to a force break, but we will be back with news from outside the Gambia. Stay tuned. Welcome back. At least 34 people have been killed in a series of explosions in Brussels. One of the explosions killed 14 people at the departure hall of Brussels Zevetem Airport, and 20 others later died in the blast in Molimbic metro station in Brussels, close to the EU offices. Islamic State militants have claimed responsibility for what could be described as a black day for Belgium. Details in this report. Following the explosions, chaotic scenes as hundreds of people flee Brussels Zeventem Airport in panic. An hour later, passengers are evacuated from an underground tunnel after a bomb tears through the last car of an underground train. Terror has returned to the heart of Europe. The first attack took place shortly after 8 a.m. in the departure hall at Brussels airport. Two explosions came in quick succession. This mobile phone video shows the chaos and horror immediately after the blasts. Airport officials tweeted that all flights from Brussels had been cancelled. Mobile phone video showed passengers fleeing the airport building. The police try to control the evacuation as well as they can. But in the panic, some travelers stray onto the motorway, dragging their luggage with them. I just went to the toilet and then like after five minutes I, I heard an explosion and all the ceilings is going down 
and then I, I just go under the sink and then the second explosion went and then everything is black. I was in the check-in line for a flight to Abu Dhabi and all of a sudden I heard an explosion, I would say about 20 to 25 meters away from me. And I saw a huge cloud of white smoke coming from the place where the explosion was, with people running from this direction. At 10 past 9, a second attack. A bomb explodes on an underground train in the center of the city. Fire brigades, paramedics, the police and army are in full force outside the Mailbeck train station, recovering bodies and tending to the many wounded. The station is just meters away from the European Commission and the European Council. All local transport in the city is shut down. Underground trains halt service and passengers are forced to evacuate, not knowing at this point what has just happened. <laughs> Then comes a tweet from Belgian Prime Minister Charles Michel. Stay where you are, do not go out. A press conference follows shortly afterwards. Mesdames et messieurs, ce que nous redoutions... Ladies and gentlemen, what we feared has happened. Our country and our citizens have been hit by blind, violent and cowardly attacks. At this dark moment for our country, now more than ever, I would like to appeal to all to be calm and show solidarity. We are confronted with a challenge, a difficult challenge. And we must face it by standing united, showing solidarity and staying together. Dark times for Brussels. Michel called for patience. He said questions about who the masterminds were and why the authorities failed to prevent the attacks would be answered in due time. Right now, Belgium is forced to deal with the immediate aftermath of terror. We now join the Weather Center for an update of the weather report. Hello, good evening and welcome to the weather forecast. The Gambia has been very blue, cloudy and warm during the past 24 hours. And for the satellite image shows medium clouds over the central and southern part of Africa, likewise over the Gulf of Guinea. Tonight the weather will be partly cloudy to cloudy atmosphere accompanied by a cool and occasionally breezy condition, especially over the western half of the country. Similar conditions are expected to prevail tomorrow morning there after becoming warm in the afternoon. Surface winds will be northerly and not it studies in direction and the speed vary between 15 and 25 kilometers per hour. Minimum temperatures across the country will be 17 degrees over the greater boundary, 16 over west coast, 15 over north bank, 18 over lower river, 19 over central, and 20 over upper river region. And for the maximum temperatures will be 35 degrees over the greater boundary, 34 over west coast, 37 over north bank, 38 over central, and 39 over central and upper river region. Low tide will be 0 0.2 meters at 4 a.m. and 0 0.3 meters at 4 p.m. High tide will be 1.6 meters at 10 a.m. and 1.8 meters at 11 p.m. Waves will be 0 to 1 meter and metallic swells. The sun will rise at 9 minutes after 7 in the morning and set at 18 minutes after 7 in the evening. That was the forecast. Thanks for watching and good night. And before we take leave of you, a recap of the day's main stories. Hundreds of mourners have been paying their respects to the chief of Combo Central, Dimbo Keleng Bojang, who died age 82. Kimsel has introduced innovative mobile money transfer technology to the market as part of a robust strategy to war customers. Amidst the speed of fatal road traffic accidents in the Greater Banjo area, the police public relations officer has been weighing in on the measures put in place to ensure road safety. And the Islamic militants have claimed responsibility for Tuesday's audacious terror, terrorist attack on Belgium, begging more questions than answers. Well, viewers, that was all in this edition of the News at 10. From me, Winifred, Nicol, and the entire news team, thanks for the pleasure of your company. Do stay with us and enjoy the rest of our programs.